When the Viet really spot good. has the green sauce, it's legit. Có biết nói tiếng Việt. Gerald, anh tên là gì? Anh tên là Gucci Gabe. Oh. Wow. Wow. I never had tofu made by a white guy, so I'm gonna be my first time. <laughs> What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of our Vietnamese food series called Beyond Fun. Of course, with us, we got Richie Lee and Gucci Gate Tramps. What's going on guys? Super excited to try this food, man. Yeah, first time in New York, I heard good things about the Viet food. All right, you guys, we're in front of Dion D, which is what the food media refers to as the coolest Vietnamese restaurant in America. Now, I heard that is there maybe an internal debate within the Vietnamese American community? Does our food need to be elevated? Does it need to bring in all this and bring in all that? Because it was pretty good at eight bucks. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I feel like why not have it for both? You know, you want to go there when you're chill, and then you also want to go to a spot when you want to dress up and not and what everything. So uh, I feel like there's room for both. For me, I'm just excited to taste what a $15 bun meat tastes like. Okay. <laughs> Dion, Dion D, D, let's, let's go. go. All right, what up? We're here with the owner, Tuan Dion D. Tell us what you were trying to accomplish with this spot because I think, yeah. you know, some of the people in the food media said it was like the coolest Vietnamese spot that, you know, they've ever seen before. Yeah. I mean, did you set out to do that or what, what was the goal? Whether it's cool or not, that's like Bui Gizud and which is really trying to step it up in terms of the Vietnamese American dining experience, which means food, design, service, all that. So we're just trying to level it up. That's what we're trying to do. This time it's not about our, our grandparents, it's not about our immigrant families uh, doing the food, it's not about us doing the food. So, you know, we're bringing some young talent. You can see that on the menu. I think we're trying to elevate based on like what our experience is. We're talking about Vietnamese food. We always make a point of saying we're Vietnamese American and that's really the perspective of what it is. So, you know, we all grew up eating our mother's uh, recipes. We understand like where they're coming from. But at the end of the day, it's our time, it's our voice, and it's really uh, our, our palate and our taste that we have to trust. So we're just taking it over. We're taking we're taking it to the next step. So we're carrying over from that generation to our generation. So this is what we're doing. And it's still true to who we are. It's still authentic to being Vietnamese American. All right, you guys, I got to ask you guys, Richie, Gabe, you guys have both spent some time in Vietnam. Well, have you had this dish? No, never. I mean, I'm excited to try it with the enoki mushrooms. You don't see Viet dishes incorporate enoki mushrooms very often, so I'm, I'm excited to try it. But it doesn't surprise you there's a dish you haven't had. No, dude, there is like so many dishes coming out. I, I'm still learning about new dishes till this day. Go and yip. And uh, you know what's really interesting? I, I don't know if it's the same yip, but yip in Cantonese means leaf, so it could mm. be. Welcome! That sauce. All he said was green this bomb ass sauce. He just called it the green sauce, bro. Fortin. Northern fall with an egg yolk. A lot of a uh, scallion flavor to the broth. It's really interesting. The beef almost reminds me of some like yakiniku or Korean barbecue yeah, beef because they, it they grilled it. It was really interesting for me to have that egg yolk diffused into the beef broth. I've never had beef and egg yolk before. It's not really a common pairing, but it kind of makes the broth a little bit milky. And overall, man, I like this dish a lot. I would say it does taste pretty different than your standard Southern pho though. It's not like- a, Not as like beefy. Right. Pho with ginger scallion sauce and the egg yolk. So Tuan was saying that obviously initially I'm like, yo, is this kind of their fusion of Hainan chicken? He says he is, it is authentic. They do eat this style in Vietnam, but it's probably regional. You know what I love about that? Yo, the, the ginger Italian sauce is fire, by the way. It didn't make sense. There's nothing that makes sense. You know, usually with fusion, there's like a reasoning. There's like, you know what I mean? He's just like, hey, we like ginger scallion with chicken. Throw it on there on the dish, you know what I mean? Honestly, when I think of pho, Pho gad doesn't even cross my mind. It's totally not as popular as beef pho. But after tasting this, I'm a believer. The broth is so much lighter than pho ball. And honestly, you know how people gravitate to pho after a long night out? You know, pho gad is a better choice than pho ball. So you're saying the cure. chicken pho is a better hangover cure than beef pho? Yes. All right, going on to the bun chaka. This is one of my favorite dishes in the entire world. I love this. With the dill and everything like that, it's uh, I, I never have Asian food with dill. Bun chaka. Fish sausage ball. Mmm. I don't know when the last time David ate his plate that clean. Every last noodle. Bro, he did say in the world his favorite. I think for me, it's really impressive the way that uh, Dion D maintains that authenticity while completely flipping it visually too. I, I see people try to do that no. and not accomplish it, but they exactly. accomplish it. They just did it enough to still respect like the essence of 
the traditional dish. They flipped it really, and I, I wouldn't even call it flip, just elevated it. It's really cool that we're talking about like elevated Vietnamese food. I remember when we used to do these videos, the main discussion was always like the war or like, you know, North versus South or whatever. But like, we're talking about different subjects few years later in this sit down the right narrative now. Shot. the narrative the, the conversation has already evolved yeah i was just thinking of thinking like larger picture and i was like man this is really cool that viet food has now gone to these different you know areas of the united states and it, I, honestly i'm proud like from the drinks to like the cocktails to the food to being here in brooklyn in a great neighborhood it, it's really cool to see all right, you guys, moving on to the bun mies. They're doing some interesting things here. They're coring out the bread to make sure the ratios are correct. I think yeah, you can use salt they, and pepper chips. They, gave, they, they, they carved out the little, little, little uh, hot pocket right hey, there, basically. You know I've I mean? seen this on YouTube when I searched the Vietnamese street food and they're making bun really? mies. Sometimes they carve out the middle yeah, to, that's to dope. stuff it so that, you know, the meat can fit in who, there more. Yeah. Who wants an egg? Who wants a tofu? Man, guys, I'll, I want to try the tofu. He said he handmade that. Yo, Gabe, I think you, you know, got to try the tofu because your Vietnamese speaking friend over there, he, he made that. With his oh, hands. that is true. You made this tofu. I made this tofu. I took the soybeans, I blended it, I squeezed it by hand, and I coagulated it. I never had tofu right. made by a white guy, so I <laughs> that made my first time. He, that, he speaks some Viet, so he he's legit. You want to speak some Viet for the people? Hey, Gabe can talk to you. Gabe, Gabe. Go big nothing big. Gerald. I'm Tin Lazi. I'm Gucci Gabe. I know Vietnam, I don't. Oh, I'm going to Vietnam, Seattle. Bun me on a Portuguese bun. Yo, the pate is fire. Mm, with oh. that slight hint of Maggie. Yo, no, this is Maggie, a Maggie, don't sleep on the Maggie. This is a vegetarian pate on the tofu one. I'm gonna give this one as far as a vegetarian bun me goes, five out of five. So Richie, I went to Bamboo Desserts back in Kent and they have this rice paper salad that kind of looks similar to this. Yeah, this is actually utilized for a lot of different dishes. I actually know this dish to eat it with coagulated blood. It's like almost like a secret item in a lot of restaurants. You gotta mm. kind of be in the know because you're actually not legally supposed to have it on the menu. So uh, a lot of spots that, you know, like my parents or my siblings would know, Wait, but legally. they often use this type of cracker. Go oi swai, shrimp and mango salad. Oh, these are some game day nachos. Is that good? Wow. What I really enjoy about this dish is the kind of grilled, roasted, and fried dried shrimp and the fried shallots. And that's what I love about Vietnamese food. They really utilize the fried shallots yeah. in their cooking. And it adds so much flavor. And just sprinkling that all into the salad. Yeah, it's fire. this is not one of those salads where you're like, oh, I need a bite with uh, meat every single bite. Like, this really kind of infuses the shrimp meat and juices in it. All right, last but not least, guys, this is kind of their flip on a classic dish by using the shortbread, right? Boom, soon, long, noon. Grilled short rib and vermicelli. Mm. The grilled beef short ribs adds that char that, that really good. changes you know, the whole the flavor. The char the was insane. Do you guys taste that the short rib might have been grilled with almost like some fish sauce in it? In the marinade, they definitely add some, some sort of fish sauce or soy sauce. It really reminded me of a rice plate type of short rib. All right, guys, we just ate through the entire lunch menu here at Dion D. Like we said, food media calls this the coolest Vietnamese restaurant in America. I can't co-sign it, I can't deny it, but let me just tell you this, the food is incredible here. This is one of my favorite Vietnamese restaurants. Of course, you know, I have I go to Full Grand a lot too, which is about $7 a person, yeah. but as far as uh, spending money here, it seems well worth it. I mean, that's just my takeaway. I don't know, wait, wait, Gabe? You no, know, for me, when I typically get Viet food for lunch, you just go to like a Vietnamese deli, get like a real cheap bun mi or something like that. But it is a, definitely a nice switch up to get something just a little bit more elevated than that. Man, I'm just really happy that the discussion is going beyond what we always used to talk about in every single episode. Now it's like, we're talking about new things and that's how it should be. People should be pushing the mold. And I love that, you know, my people basically are really killing it. All right guys, thank you so much for watching that video. I hope you guys liked it. Hit that like button, click subscribe. Check out Richie's channel, you guys know him. Check out Gabe's Instagram down below too. In the comments down below, let us know if there are any other restaurants or cultural hubs around New York or the East Coast you would love us to, to try, and also what your favorite Vietnamese dish is that maybe is kind of rare. And what do you think of the elevated versus traditional debate, or is there no debate? Anyway, you guys, huge shout out to Dion D. Follow him on social below, Richie, Gabe. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.
All right, you guys, we just wrapped up at Dion D, but we were kind of just walking through Brooklyn, and they have like such weird, obscure concepts here. We had to stop by Rush Hour Cookies. Woo! Guys. Man, it looks crazy. I apparently, thought a, I thought it was an arcade. Yeah, I thought it was a, a paraphernalia shop. I don't know. <laughs> well, apparently, it's open by Rice Gum and T Pain. Right, right. And I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Yo, if you buy six cookies, you get two chances to get free cookies shooting free throws. So we definitely doing that. <laughs> Richie put the Giannis onto the Kumpo. And I think we may have a lane oh, violation. That's right. Giannis took more than 10 seconds. Free throw routine. Oh! oh! All right, I'm gonna go Yo. with the bank. All right, you guys, here's the haul. Whoa. I have a blue cookie wrapped Yo. around a chocolate chip cookie. Mine is rainbow on the inside. Look at all that apple Dang. goo. Rush hour cookies. Wow. The apple one tastes just like a McDonald's apple pie. Yo. All right. And that's, that's a compliment. Yo, I like my, my cake really wet. The cookies are wet. Like, this is like a, um, I don't know, man. It almost tastes like a half. Eight cookie. Yeah. All right. Round two. Whoa! Ooh. This one has Nutella in the middle. I didn't taste the cake, but you know, in Matilda, when the uh, the bad kid had to eat the cake on uh -huh. the uh, stage, this is what I envisioned his cake was tasting like. That's like the fifth time you referenced the Matilda cake. Hey, top that's ten movie in my opinion. I don't know true. what you guys think. Top ten, top ten. What I like about Rush Hour cookies is that. People are taking a risk. Clearly, it's like a super wacky concept, super wacky branding. Everybody's doing this like postmodern, you know, hipster thing right nowadays. They said, we're just gonna do what we are. Hey, yo, it really feels like the identity of hanging out with some friends on the couch, be like, hey, we should start a cookie company. Came, came about, you know? And shout out to them for showing the faces of the owners, the Asian and the black guy. I think, like it. you know, that's just, that's just, it's cool. Bunda, mom tom. Sacre bleu! Get me off the backboard. 